Hello, I'm Senator Joe Manchin. It is my distinct honor to welcome our veterans, their families, and the community of supporters participating in the ninth anniversary of Gene Vance Jr. Day. Today, we remember the life and legacy of a great man, Gene Vance. Throughout his life, Gene embodied the best of what it means to be a mountaineer. He was known for being an avid sportsman and had a keen but modest intelligence. Gene was a man of many interests and had dedicated his life to continuing his family's legacy of military service. He left us too soon, but saved many lives through his heroic battlefield actions. It is the strength and dedication of our community supporting our troops that truly stands out and make a difference. After all, our great state has mined the coal that forged the steel, that built the great ships and tanks that Americans have served on. West Virginia has given so much, and we have much to be proud of. I ask you to join me in taking a moment to reflect on the unwavering and loyal service of Staff Sergeant Vance and all our nation's heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice defending our freedom. For those serving today, we continue to pray for their safety and speedy return home to their families. As always, I greatly appreciate the efforts of the West Virginia National Guard, the City of Morgantown, the Gene Vance Jr. Foundation for the Catastrophically Injured, and all those who contributed to making this special event possible to honor and support our service members. I spend, send a special blessing to Gene's family, who bear the burden of being a Gold Star family. We all honor you this day and every day and pay deep homage to your sacrifice. Thank you and God bless you, and may we forever honor the, mon uh, the memory of Staff Sergeant Gene Vance. Today we honor the life and legacy of Staff Sergeant Gene Arden Vance, Jr. Gene's life was tragically cut short, but he died a hero, defending our country and the freedoms we hold so dear. His legacy lives on not only in the lives he touched, but also in the support he provides veterans and their families today in the Gene Vance Jr. Foundation. This year, our celebration of Gene's life is a little different, but I hope this day reminds us that even in difficult times, we live in the greatest country on earth. We may be separated from each other physically, but I hope our time apart has helped us better appreciate the times when we are together. We will all be together again one day soon. I know Gene will be smiling down on us. To Gene's family, thank you for your tremendous sacrifice. Thank you for the service you continue to give veterans and their families across West Virginia. God bless you and God bless America. Hello, I'm Governor Jim Justice. And what an honor it is for me to recognize the ninth annual Gene Vance Day. A day that, uh, that I hate like crazy. I'm not going to be able to be with you in person. We have to do this the way we're doing it and everything. You know, this terrible pandemic has surely got everyone upside down. And uh, I hope and pray that it's going to pass as soon as we possibly can. We're surely trying to do the right things in West Virginia. We've kept our numbers great, but we still lost... 51 people, and I ask you for, to, to keep them in your thoughts and prayers today as we go forward. Uh, everyone knows that today is the National Armed Forces Day. You know, it, uh, it's a day that is just as simple as this to me. It's a day that we should do every day, and that is to be able to show our gratitude for all the men and women that have protected us, that continue to sacrifice of themselves in every way and their families and everything, every part of them, we owe everything to, everything. They always ask so little and, we, and, and, and absolutely give so much. It is, it is phenomenal, their bravery, and we can never, ever thank them enough. And we should not only thank them on today, but we should be thanking them every day. Again, I just could never be more sincere in what I tell you that these men and women we owe so much to. In fact, we owe all to. And, uh, and so the best of our best are on the front lines. We know they're there, and we know absolutely they're protecting us each and every day. And I would end by just saying this, and they, they know this from the bottom of their hearts, I know it from mine, and I'm sure you know it from yours. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Okay. 
This year marks the ninth year that we recognize Gene Vance Jr. Day in Morgantown, West Virginia. We recognize Gene's sacrifice and commitment to our nation and Gene's heroism in saving the lives of other service members from his, his own organization as well as 18 allied soldiers. We also remember that Gene's family is a part of this as well and we recognize them as a Gold Star family and the sacrifices and commitments that they've made to our nation. It's important that we continue to carry on Gene's legacy of sacrifice, service, and the, the things that Gene represented as a person. Being kind, caring, taking care of other people, being focused on his state and his nation. All those things are important for us to remember during this event and recognizing Gene's service and sacrifice to our nation. God bless Gene and God bless his family and God bless the great state of West Virginia and the United States of America. It's my honor to be asked to speak again this year in recognition of the ninth annual Gene Vance Day in Morgantown. While we cannot come together this year to celebrate Gene's life and remember his sacrifice, I believe it's important that we do the things to commemorate these tremendous individuals. Gene, like so many before him and since, embodied what it truly meant to be an American. Selfless individuals that are willing to put everything on the line to protect the freedom and democracy that we hold so dear. So on Today, I just ask that we take a moment to remember and honor these great individuals like Gene. And I just wanted to say from me, my soldiers, and my family, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Kuecki, Mayor of the City of Morgantown. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity to speak to you. Today is the day when we honor those men and women, such as Gene Vance, Jr., that have served and continue to serve our great country, whether they serve in the armed forces, local law enforcement, or they are on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's because of their remarkable sacrifices and commitment to this nation that we are able to enjoy the freedoms and safety that we have come to expect living in this, the greatest country in the world. Today is a day for remembrances and appreciation, but it is also a day for inspiration and hope. These may seem to be hard to come by right now given the global pandemic, but we need only to look at the meaning of this day to find inspiration and hope. We should also be inspired by seeing communities come together in times of great difficulties such as this. Neighbors helping neighbors, Thank you is written in chalk on the sidewalk, spending more time with loved ones. These are moments that give me inspiration and hope. Together, we can navigate this new normal and we will become stronger because of it. Stay safe, take care, and thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, I am truly proud to help commemorate Gene Vance Jr. Day, which honors a heroic West Virginia University alumnus who lost his life in Afghanistan 18 years ago. On this day, we traditionally pay tribute to all veterans, military members, and their families who have sacrificed to preserve our freedom. To them, we owe our ability to live and learn, to protest and pray, to think and to thrive. This year, amid a global pandemic that is posing medical, economic, and social challenges, unlike anything we have experienced, we also salute the first responders, healthcare providers, and essential workers who are risking danger to help others. In this very difficult time, may the example of Staff Sergeant Vance and other veterans inspire our own acts of courage and sacrifice. Let's go. Hi there, my name is David Goldberg and I'm President and CEO of Mon Health System. On behalf of all the employees, the clinicians, the board members, the auxiliary members, the nurses, the phlebotomists, and everywhere in between, we thank the community for its outpouring support for us, the first responders. 
Um, you have made such a difference in our lives as we continue to look after and look forward to taking care of our community. You all have been um, putting wind in our sails uh, as we continue to move forward um, and be here for the community each and every day. Um, the amount of food, the gowns and masks and face masks that have been donated, uh, people who've come here to want to be able to support us, the signs all around the community um, has been um, so heartfelt and we appreciate it. Um, these are unprecedented times. They're trying times. Um, to our military, to our first responders, our EMS and fire and police and rescue squads, we thank you for putting yourself in um, the front of everything that needs to be done for our community to keep us safe, to keep us healthy, uh, to move us forward. Um, to the nurses at the floor, all of our doctors, we thank you for making the difference. Um, to our politicians, our governor, um, our federal delegation, um, to our mayors, to our council members, we thank you for helping us make sure we have the resources we need to take care of our patients. While West Virginia has seen its fair amount of deaths and everyone is, um, um, breaks my heart, um, the amount of sick people we've seen that are COVID-related and not COVID-related, um, we, we are here for you always, um, and we wanna make sure you know we are taking every precaution that we can to make sure we keep you safe, keep our community safe, uh, and make sure that we're here for you moving into the future. Um, you've put off medical procedures. Um, we ask you to stay in close contact with your doctors, your nurse practitioners, your physician assistants, and get the timely care you need. If it's an emergency, get to the emergency room. Use telemedicine, um, call 911. We have taken every precaution to keep you safe, keep our environments clean. We social distance, we wear masks. I'm in my office by myself, no one around me, which is why I don't have my mask on. But all of us are wearing our masks. And even here at Mount Health Medical Center, to the patients in our uh, rooms that have been admitted who don't need to um, uh, have, be intubated, uh, we give them masks so they have extra precautions if they want a mask when they're talking with their doctor, their caregivers, um, to make sure that they feel safe. We've restricted uh, access, and that's a very important part of what we do to make sure we don't spread this COVID-19 outside of our facilities, which we don't have it, um, and make sure that we mitigate the risk. I'm pleased that as of today, um, we have had only six of our more than 3,000 employees test positive for COVID. Um, that is an outstanding statistic, less than a half a percent. Our village at Heritage Point um, has had no positives there through today, uh, the 11th of May. So we are thrilled with that. Um, not one resident um, has tested positive. So we thank you um, to our armed forces. We, you keep us safe. You have provided the liberties uh, for us to have this wonderful country and to move forward. And for that, we are eternally grateful. So um, I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I thank you on behalf of the Mon Health System family uh, we thank our community and we thank you all for supporting us in the ability for us to support you. Uh, and uh, we wish you all well. Stay healthy. Follow the CDC guidelines. They're there for a reason and they're working. West Virginia has outperformed because of people being uh, very dedicated to following instruction and doing the right thing. And we thank you for that. Godspeed. Hi, my name is Neil Leftwich and I'm the minister at Spruce Street United Methodist Church and it is a privilege for me to participate in United in Spirit, an American dream. Please join with me in prayer. Almighty God, Lord of hosts, we call out to you as the one who is sovereign over all. Watch over and protect our nation's military members and their families. Take into your most gracious protection our service members currently deployed as they serve around the world, we ask that you guard their families and loved ones back home and provide them with peace and surround them with love as they long for the return. For some, Lord, service takes its toll permanently in physical and emotional damage. For those wounded in battle, we pray that you would be beside them, sustain and strengthen them amidst treatment, pain, and adjustments to life with an injury. Help them, Lord, and continue to bring healing into them through their caregivers and strengthen their caregivers as well. Some have made the ultimate sacrifice, laying down their precious lives in service to our nation. 
We especially pause a moment to remember Staff Sergeant Gene Arden Vance Jr. and his heroism, which continues to be a witness to what it means to live a life for the greater good of others and the community. We thank you for the freedom that these service members fought for, which we enjoy today. For each and every veteran who has served our country through the years, we thank you for their sacrifice. Be with our nation's leaders as well, and all those who make decisions. Give them wisdom and discernment in everything they do. Loving God, we long for the day when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. We long for your peace, for your shalom, and in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm Rabbi Joe Hampel at Tree of Life Congregation in Morgantown. In these anxious times, for those on the front lines protecting us, I want to offer the priestly blessing from the Book of Numbers, Chapter 6. Some call it the benediction. This gesture was made by the priests in the ancient temple in Jerusalem. It represents rays of light. Yevarechecha Adonai Ve'yishmerecha Our armed services and our veterans who have risked their lives to uphold our liberty and our constitution. May the Eternal bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai panave lecha v'chunecha Law enforcement, security personnel, those who screen travelers at ports of entry, those who monitor the seas and skies and borders on our behalf. May the Eternal smile on you and favor you. Yesa Adonai panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. Doctors and nurses, hospital staff, medical researchers, those braving contagion every day to help the sick and the dying and win the war on this virus. May the Eternal look upon you and grant you peace. Hello, I'm Cynthia Harper, Regent of Woodburn Chapter, National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution. This wreath is presented in honor of Jean Vance Jr. Day. I am honored to participate in this unique annual day. I'm thankful to the American soldiers, those who are currently serving, those who have served, and those who have fallen. During the time of the coronavirus pandemic and the war on terror, it is essential for us to remain grateful. Gratitude has the power to bring hope. It also helps us to cope with difficult times. Gratitude provides perspective from which we can view life and not be overwhelmed by temporary circumstances. Let us honor the legacy of our heroes like Gene Vance Jr. And let us be grateful for the opportunity to stand for liberty, freedom, and fairness. Today, we honor the memory of Staff Sergeant Jean Arden Vance Jr. and the many soldiers fallen in the wars. It is an honor for us musicians to have a role in comforting others in the life and events of our country, to help us unify with the same purpose that Sergeant Vance cherished during his life and sacrifice. We must never forget the many soldiers fallen in wars. It is important to remember the individuals, the lives they led, the talents they shared, and the heroism that so strong in those who defended our home. I am Leticia Grutzman, the director of the Vox Principalis Choral Association in Morgantown, West Virginia, home of Sergeant Benz and family. Members of our choir still remember the patriotic music from Sergeant Vance's funeral service. Today, with choral music, we would like to offer comfort to the families in a tribute to Sergeant Vance's bravery, service to this country, and legacy as we sing The Ground by Ola Yale.
Hey everyone, this is Cody Clayton Eagle, and I'd just like to take a moment, and I want to thank all our brave men and women who have uh, proudly served our country and to those who still are serving our country. I'd also like to take another moment, and I want to thank everybody who's on the front lines right now during this COVID-19 pandemic for all the hours that you've put in and for all the blood, sweat, and tears. And I know a thank you just doesn't always seem good enough. So that's why Troy Costolano, Nancy Deckett, and myself wrote this song. And we want to dedicate this song to you. I hope you really like it. And this one's on me. Hello from the Davison Brothers. We would like to thank you guys for including us for the ninth annual Gene Bands Jr. Day. And we want to thank Gene Bands Jr. and all of our armed forces around the world for keeping us safe and protecting us. God bless you all and thank you. Good buddies, you see. 
We stand up for what we believe And we're fighters True survivors We don't turn our backs and run No outsider Yeah, I'm a fighter We're all fighters My last name It runs deep Like the promises I make And the friends I keep And we stand as one We stand strong and tall It's all for one and it's one for all And we're fighters True survivors We don't turn our backs and run No outsider Yeah, I'm a fighter We're all Just true survivors We don't turn our backs and run No outsider Yeah, I'm a fighter And you're all fighters If you fight Hi everyone, my name is Eric Lewis and this is my collaborator Rick Martin. Say hello Rick. Uh, I'm excited every year when I get to participate in the ceremony honoring Gene Vance Jr. and everyone else in our armed forces. This year is a little different, it's kind of crazy. I shaved my head, but it will grow back and so will America. I hope it grows back soon though. Anyway, we thought we would pay tribute to everyone this year on the front lines of this battle. So thank you and God bless America.
fiery gospel Written roads of burnished steel As ye deal with my condemners So with you my grace shall reel Let the hero, born of woman Crush the serpent with his heel Since God is Hello, I'm Doug Geary, a ride captain with the West Virginia Patriot Guard Riders. I'm also a Vietnam era veteran. Today is also the Gene Vance Tribute 9. I have been with Michael Mintz from Tribute 1 through Tribute 9. This is also Armed Forces Day. Coincidentally, this is a day that we celebrate the men and women that are currently serving on one of the five branches of the military service. As a Patriot Guard writer, we also include another special elite group known as the first responders. As we go through these troubled times now, we also include the first responders and our military men and women that have given so unselfishly for us, Americans, veterans, non-veterans, but Americans. So today, as we enjoy Armed Forces Day, let's never forget the sacrifices that these people have given us, for us. And as I close, let's remember to stand for the flag and kneel for the cross. May you have a blessed day. We pray this broadcast finds you and yours keeping safe and well. I am Michael Mintz, founder of the Jean Vance Jr. Foundation for the Catastrophically Injured. We now share in the largest common catastrophe in recent history, as the coronavirus pandemic kills a devastating number of people throughout the world daily and forces our loved ones apart. At least a thousand fellow Americans, and at times more than two thousand, have died every day over the last month from the virus, 
Our heartfelt condolences to all those throughout the world who have lost loved ones as we pray for all who are impacted. Over the last nine years, on this Gene Vance Junior Day, we have come together annually in Morgantown, West Virginia, on Armed Forces Day, to share with other Gene Vance Junior Memorials in West Virginia, Texas, California and Afghanistan, a special day of tribute. A day that honours not only our fallen, wounded and brave defenders, their allies and all our first responders on the front line of America's longest war on terror, but celebrates what it means to be an American. Tragically, today there is a new front line, with losses that exceed several of our military battles. A front line filled with everyday heroes fighting an invisible enemy. Doctors, nurses, EMTs, police, firemen, and hosts of emergency personnel, grocery, pharmacy, sanitation, delivery, and government staff, together with many others, including those impacted by the virus who teach our children. While the grief, sadness, and challenges we are experiencing in this battle are truly overwhelming, we are reminded that another world is possible because of you. Now more than ever, we are united in spirit by grief, concern, and gratitude. In this moment, let's celebrate us because we must help each other in order to win these unprecedented battles. Rest assured, we Americans will win these battles not only because they must be won at all costs, but because we are Americans. As Americans, we embody courage, integrity, honor, respect, duty, loyalty, care, and the true meaning of community. Whatever you do today and every day is redefining all of us as we grapple to comprehend the new normal, provide hope, assistance and generate solutions. To all who run towards danger every day to save lives, thank you. Please know that we are working hard to support you while aspiring to provide insight and education into this catastrophe. During this fight for our lives, the world we know is changing faster than ever before. We are grateful for the outpouring of support and participation provided by many during these extraordinary and challenging times. Please continue to embrace our ongoing efforts to keep communities safe, hopeful, inspired and grateful. Only you can make a difference by practicing personal hygiene, social distancing and wearing face coverings to protect the vulnerable. Our heartfelt thanks for all you do every day. Hello, I'm Dr. Myrta Martin, President of Fairmont State University. On behalf of Fairmont State, I wish to take this opportunity on Jean Vance Junior Day to reach out to everyone in West Virginia and beyond as we realize that it will take all of us, all of us, working together while apart to emerge from this pandemic. Let us take the lessons we're learning now about ourselves, the patience, generosity, civility and kindness towards each other that we're currently practicing. Let's make them part of our new normal that respects and benefits everyone. Let's remember that all those people that we call heroes now the first responders, our service men and women, our teachers, grocery store workers, restaurant employees. Those folks, they are now just as much a hero as they have been each and every single day. So let's make honoring and appreciating their work part of our new normal as well. And let us remind ourselves that it does not take a global pandemic to reunite with friends or with family. Please continue to check in on those who may need help providing for themselves. If you know someone who's prone to feeling lonely or depressed, please continue to check on them. And if you're having difficulty, please reach out to your friends or family or seek out the multitude of online and national resources for confidential counseling that are available to you. We are going to get through this 
and we will be stronger because while apart, we are still together. Please stay healthy. Please stay safe. God bless each and every one of you and your families. Thank you.